So I recently completed a challenge where I beat Subnautica using only the bladder fish to refill my oxygen. It was painful, but I did it with the help of the rebreather and teleporters. And some of you commented that I could have used unpowered multi-purpose rooms with alien containment facilities to hop my way to the seafloor. Then I could refill on fish as I went, and as the bladder fish continuously breed, I wouldn't have to keep refilling the aquariums. And this got me wondering, would this actually work? I hopped into a creative world to find out, and crazily enough, it did. Even without any power to the base, bladderfish will continue to breed, and as these bases are offline, no oxygen is produced. In unpowered bases, oxygen efficiency still applies, so there's no benefit to being inside. And these two facts meant only one thing. I was going to have to do this again, but this time, it's personal. No rebreather, no teleporters, only me, and hundreds of bladderfish. For those who didn't see the first video, here's some quick maths to get you up to speed. Without making any oxygen tanks, you have 45 seconds of oxygen. But if you eat a bladderfish, you receive another 15 seconds, but they also give you minus 4 hydration. If I was going to beat Subnautica, I would need to balance my need for oxygen and hydration, as I needed to eat a lot of fish to have enough air to survive, but also not too many to dehydrate myself to death in the process. Due to oxygen efficiency, below 200 meters, the wiki says you consume 5 seconds of oxygen for every 1 second you are below this depth, meaning you need to eat more fish in order to survive. 45 seconds divided by a usage of 5 means I would run out of oxygen in 9 seconds, and this was my starting assumption, and the one I used in the first video. But it seems the wiki is either wrong on this, or the game is bugged, as in my tests, a full tank of oxygen would actually last around 20 seconds, so I actually had a bit more breathing room than I initially thought. But this was still going to be tough, and I was going to hatch those eggs no matter the cost to my personal sanity. This time, I was going to start from a position of strength. We now know from the previous video that the early areas of the game can be beaten using only bladderfish, so we're going to leap straight into the action. Everything before needing to venture down to the alien thermal plant is already completed for this run. I set up a massive surface base near the Lost River entrance on the border of the mountains and the bulb zone, with large aquariums full of bladderfish. This would be the beating heart of the operation to come, producing bladderfish twice a day through breeding to fuel the dive ahead and the outposts I was going to create. The plan was to stack four multi-purpose rooms on top of each other and have a large alien containment facility running through the inside. This would mean each outpost would have the capacity for 40 bladderfish. Making them this size meant that I could take the fish and not have to wait huge amounts of time for their population to recover through breeding. Each outpost would have two external hatches and two to escape the inbuilt aquariums. I'd enter the outpost at the top, swim down through it and grab bladderfish, and pop out at the bottom ready to move deeper. A pretty simple system, but this would require a lot of resources. 24 titanium to create the multi-purpose rooms, 4 quartz and another 8 titanium for the hatches, and 20 glass and another 8 titanium for the aquariums. And while this might not sound like a lot, carrying this all to the seafloor whilst also carrying water and bladderfish was going to be a painful process. Carry too many materials and I wouldn't make it back to the surface. Take too little and I'd have to do more runs to create each base, and the trips weren't short. I wanted to place the outposts far enough apart so I didn't have to make too many of them, but they also had to be close enough together that I wouldn't be struggling to reach my next safe house. As without teleporters, I was going to need to complete this trip in reverse to make it back to the surface each time. I began by descending the 400 or so meters to the Lost River entrance, and after heading a little way inside, I placed down two multi-purpose rooms which would form my first outpost. But this was all I had the inventory space for, and I didn't want to carry any more and risk drowning. After restocking on resources, I headed back down and placed another two multi-purpose rooms to create the outline of my first outpost, but I still couldn't get inside, so another trip was needed to place down hatches. Now the funny thing about alien containment aquariums is that they only stack when placed on top of each other, but because of this, I needed to put four hatches on the outside of the base so I could get into each room individually and craft them. I could have used ladders to go between floors, but that would have meant taking more resources, and as I needed four hatches anyway, it made more sense to make them and then break them down once I was finished. But this was still a pain as it meant further trips up and down from the surface. After finally creating the aquariums and hatches, my first outpost was complete. As I didn't need oxygen in the bases, I didn't have to be worried about hull integrity or them flooding, but the annoying thing was I would end up with this message stuck on the side of my screen that would never go away, so I did end up reinforcing the outpost so I didn't have to look at it. After this, I had to do another run down to fill my sanctuary 
sanctuary with bladder fish, but creating Outpost 1 wasn't too painful. Little did I know just how much suffering this relatively simple plan was going to cause me the deeper I went. After setting up the first outpost, the plan was to swim down to it and replenish any bladder fish I had eaten in order to get to it, and then push forward to put down the foundations of my second safe haven. The problem was, this was a very fine balancing act. When choosing the site of my next outpost, I couldn't go too deep, as I would only have the bladder fish in my inventory to make it back to outpost 1 and then to the surface. Another problem was dehydration. Each bladder fish eaten reduced my hydration by 4, and as I was eating even more fish than last time I tried this challenge, this was an even bigger problem. As my journeys got longer, the more fish I ate and the more water I needed to carry. I set the foundations of my second outpost on the verge of the pit that leads into the lava zone. This was pretty much as far as I could put this outpost along the route while still being able to make it back. All I had to do now was repeat the construction process. But this relatively simple task was incredibly annoying. Not for the build process itself, but because it took absolutely forever to venture all the way from the surface to put down any base pieces. And because I couldn't carry much or risk dying from lack of oxygen, I had to do this trip almost 10 times. This was both highly stressful and mind-numbingly boring, as the trip essentially ran in one straight line from top to bottom. And to add insult to injury, I had to listen to the never-ending warning of Oxygen. 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 Around the site of outpost number two was a ghost leviathan, which made everything even more dangerous, as it liked to try and attack me while I was building. After what seemed like an age, I finally finished outpost two and filled it with bladder fish, and set out to create outpost three. This one was to be set in the lava zone, at the opening of the cave which houses the lava castle. And let me tell you, this area has one very unfriendly guard dog, the sea dragon that likes to camp right by the entrance. Even when putting down my first multi-purpose room, he made it perfectly clear that he did not like me entering his territory, and I had to use the foundations for cover from his fiery wrath. Even on the return trips to place down hatches, he just wouldn't give me a break, and all this was happening while I was still trying to place down base pieces and not drown in the process. Luckily, once the hatches were placed, I was mostly safe when building, but I still had to reach them without being barbecued. After filling outpost 3 with bladderfish, I decided I'd make a break for the alien thermal plan. I'd need to make it from the outpost through the lava zone and into the facility whilst carrying a purple tablet. This would let me open the door that was housing the blue tablet I'd need to access the primary containment facility. This was the first test of my outpost strategy. Had I put my safe house close enough to the thermal plant, not just to get to it, but to also get back. As once I left outpost 3, I wouldn't be able to restock on fish. Another worry was the heat damage of the area. Would the journey be too far and cook me alive? So I made sure to carry a first aid kit just in case. Taking one final deep breath, I set off. The journey was short but treacherous, with the sea dragon circling overhead and even phasing into a nearby wall just to give me some added stress. Luckily I made it to the facility and grabbed some kyanite as I went. I snagged the blue tablet and mentally prepared myself for the trip back. Did I have enough fish left to give me enough air to survive? I ventured out on what was actually an uneventful trip. The sea dragon must have gotten bored, and I made it back to the outpost without any attacks. Step 1 was now complete. Now I just had to get to the primary containment facility. Not wanting to create another mind-numbingly boring outpost, I decided to gamble to see if I could make it from outpost 3. I set off and things were going well. That is until the Sea Emperor and the Sea Dragon decided to team up to try and stop me. The Sea Emperor spoke to me with its telepathic ability, which blocked out some of my vision, and an opportunistic Sea Dragon decided to use that to its advantage. It decided to try and snipe me with a fireball, but luckily I was close enough to a sonic deterrent block to take cover and block the heat. I ended up swimming through the sea dragon's very tentacles to make it to the facility, but I'd made it. Once inside, I opened the sea emperor's enclosure and placed an ion cube found in the facility into the egg incubator. And then, I was left very confused. I thought that would be enough to unlock the recipe for the hatching enzymes, but I'd made a mistake. It turns out, you don't actually get the crafting recipe until you power the facility's teleporter, even if you don't use it. And I hadn't brought an ion cube to power it. This meant I would have to undertake another dangerous trip back to the surface in order to get another ion cube. But this confusion about not getting the crafting recipe had also led me to waste bladderfish while I swam around wondering what had gone wrong. Would it even be possible to make it back to Outpost 3 now? Either way, I didn't have much choice but to try. I set out again and dodged the sea dragon that launched its fire breath at me. These guys really had it in for me on this run, but once I got past him, I safely made it back to Outpost 3 with a few fish to spare. From here, I did another 
another run down to the facility and powered the teleporter, but I still didn't get the notification of a new recipe. I returned to the surface and hoped that I had it, and when I went to the crafting station, luckily I did. After gathering the materials needed to make the enzymes, I did one last uneventful trip and hatched the eggs, completing my mission. I then returned to the surface to breathe in that fresh air. Damn was it nice. These things taste like plastic. Now if you want to take on this challenge, I have one piece of advice. Just don't do it. This was incredibly tedious and to be honest, very painful. Not for the building itself, but for how many trips you have to do to and from the surface to make the outposts you need. There's nothing to be gained from doing this. Let my pain serve as a warning. And if for some reason you haven't seen the original challenge, you should click right here to watch that video next and you can see just how I got myself in this situation in the first place. And special thanks to my patrons, Asmodeus, Mateus, Graham Deloy and Baron Windy for making this video possible.